now is the time for serious rational Democrats, especially Democrats who are members of the House of Representatives or the United States Senate, to consider seriously whether or not they actually want to withdraw from the Democratic Party. The leader of the Democratic Party, President Obama, appears on the verge of bringing about the electoral destruction of the party. A number of commentators have made mention of the fact that uh, Obama's ratings at this time in his administration are quite a bit lower than President Bush's ratings were at this time in his administration. However, a number of these commentators fail to mention the fact that given the historic differences between the two elections and the two candidates, the difference between the two is most staggering than these figures would seem to indicate. We must remember that President Bush was elected in two, the year 2000 in a very contentious election. He received less than 50 percent of the vote. He received about 48.5 percent of the vote actually fewer, elect fewer popular votes than his opponent. Uh, his approval ratings by mid-summer, though, by mid-August, had risen to about 55 or 57 percent, depending on the, uh, the poll data that we're, that we're going to discuss, or that will be discussed in, in, uh, dis in contemplating this matter. President Obama, as you will recall, was elected last November with about 53 percent of the popular vote. He now has an approval rating of 47 to 48 percent or maybe even the low 50s, 50 percent, depending on the, uh, the poll data again which uh, people are considering and talking about. So that President Bush in his, in his first year rose in the rose within six or seven months from less than 50 percent to to way over 50 percent to the mid 50s. President Obama on the other hand has dropped from about 53 percent to about 47 or 48 percent or maybe the low 50s. In other words there's been a staggering difference in the approval ratings of, uh, of Bush and Obama in, in the months between their elections and their, their inaugurations and the, the summer immediately after their inauguration. Now, there are many reasons for this nosedive on the part of Obama. For one thing, he began angering the 100 million or so gun owners in the United States. He nominated for Attorney General a man who said who wanted to reinitiate the failed Clinton ban on semi-automatic firearms. For another thing, Obama, in, in his first uh, nominee to the Supreme Court, nominated a woman who stated during a public hearings that she did not know whether people have a right to defend themselves or not. She indicated she did not know whether there was a right to self-defense or not. This, this is above and beyond the possibility of whether or not uh, citizens can, can, can use firearms to defend themselves. This is a very basic philosophic question, that is whether or not people have a right to self-defense. In addition to that, Obama has been pushing for a treaty, an inter-American arms treaty, uh, which if, if accepted by the Senate, and, and implemented could lead to the destruction of the individual Second Amendment civil right of law-abiding American citizens. So there you have President Obama angering a large segment of the American people. Now, in addition to that, President Obama has angered a number of the right to life of vocalists in the United States by his position on the uh, policies regarding the right to life. So here you have people who want to defend life, who believe in the right to life, who believe in the right to keep and bear arms, and the people who 
who believe in the right of people to life from the moment of conception being angered at the one by the one president. So you have a president who's actually gone to war against large segments of the American people. Now, as if that were not enough, we have President Obama pursuing a health reform policy which is angering large segments of the American people across the board. In the month of August, people throughout the United States from all walks of life have been appearing at town hall meetings throughout the, throughout the United States voicing their anger to the various policy proposals of the Obama administration. So we have a situation now in which a president elected with a popular mandate is at the point of destroying his very mandate or eliminating from all consideration the possibility that his desired policies will be implemented with the support of a large part of the American people. So what does, what does a rational Democrat who faces election in 15 months or who, who will come back to Washington in the middle of September and will face uh, election in less than 14 months do in a situation like this? What can he do or what can she do but contemplate that at the head of their party is a man who is destroying or it appears to be on the verge of destroying the party of which they are a member. It may be time for these people, for these rational democratic men and women, to consider seriously whether or not they should withdraw from the Democratic Party. Without uh, putting myself you know, in the position of the uh, leaders of the minority party in the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, uh, people are, who are familiar with these factors might suggest to uh, Mitch McConnell, the mi minority leader of the Republicans in the Senate, and to John Boehner, the minority leader of the Republicans in the House, in the House of Representatives, that they consider seriously inviting some of these Democrats, some of these Democrats who have shown a willingness to accept rational policies and who may have indicated in public or private or both their opposition to the more outrageous policies promoted by Obama and his cronies to withdraw from their own party and to uh, switch over to the Democratic Party or to switch over from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party. As I said, it may be, it may be time seriously for large amounts of rational Democrats to consider moving away from their party, which is fast becoming the party of destruction under a leader of destruction to a, to a party which now wants to implement policies of freedom and free enterprise for the American people.